Good morning everybody. This is a Sunday morning. In England, the day you have a roast dinner typically and I'm roasting beef. This is a small beef roasting joint. But today, it's a little bit different. This is a playlist where I do retro recipes and, well, <laughs> you'll see. So I'm just gonna give this an unnecessary salt bay after a nice coating in oil. I would normally add pepper, but I've been instructed specifically by this recipe to not add anything else. Because this, ladies and gents, is gonna be, by the end of this video, chocolate fudge. I'll see you in 50 minutes. All right, and 90 minutes later, it's baked for an hour and I've let it rest. Oh, the beef smells so good. It's a Sunday here in the UK. Oh, I really want a roast dinner. No, before I slice this up, let me explain what's happening. <laughs> As you know, I do a playlist called Retro Recipes from time to time where I try some of the most nostalgic, interesting recipes out there. Now today, um, actually a lot of you have bombarded me with this over the last few months. I thought, do you know what? I'm actually gonna give this a try. Uh, I wanna thank midcenturymenu.com. I believe that's the website you guys are driving me to, but someone has actually sent me the cookbook uh, that they have referred to in this. It's called the Palette Cookbook or something like that. Hang on. There we are, look at that. The Palette Hostess Cookbook. I legitimately have one of those on the way to my house and they're actually really, really rare indeed. Uh, loving the bow uh, on the cow there. Now, apparently, uh, there are a lot of cattle herders and farmers that had so much beef they didn't know what to do with it. They pretty much ended up shoving it in most recipes and loads of you pointed towards this recipe for beef fudge. That is, yes, a chocolate fudge that's no bake. I guess that counts the baking we just did then, right? but it is filled with shredded ground roast beef. First thing we're gonna do is concentrate on the beef. We're gonna slice it up and then shred it. But I'm a big believer that if you mask something enough with enough sweetness, which is basically what this is, you should be able to hide it. I don't know if it's gonna stink of meat, but there is a lot. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot of sugar going in this. It's, it's borderline bonkers. I'm just gonna slice this beef fairly thinly and I'm gonna shove this <laughs> into a baking tin for a, a pudding. I can't believe it. Right, it's still slightly warm now, I've sliced it open and we need it to be at room temperature. So, whilst I put that to the side, let me show you everything else that makes the beef fudge. <laughs> Marshmallow fluff, sugary. Evaporated milk, sugary. Some chopped hazelnuts, naughty. 300 grams of milk chocolate, sugary, butter, naughty, and get this, this is a kilo pack of sugar. We need 800 grams. Yeah, so it's pretty full on, but I am gonna just say, I've looked on the recipe here, and it does say, in very small print, serves 50 to 60 people, which is insane. So you're thinking like having brownie big size squares? No, with that amount of sugar, it's gonna be bonkers, and, it makes me think, it doesn't matter, you can put beef in it, you can put a pug in it, you can put your shoe in it. As long as you put enough sugar in it, it should, in theory, be all right. Okay, folks, I've got two forks here, and uh, what I could do is, oh my gosh, I just flick the beef on the floor, and the dogs, if they are smart, they're pugs, so give them some flexibility, they should go eat that. Um, I was <laughs> gonna keep shredding it like that, but it's gonna take a long time, so I'm gonna bung it in my food processor and whiz it up. <laughs> like, a, like a beef smoothie. like dust that has ground it up. Right, I'm gonna do that with the rest of it. <laughs> there we go. So if you ever wondered what uh, <laughs> a bowl of shredded up freshly roast beef looks like, <laughs> that's it. Okay, let's carry on. Saucepan, a uh, pan of evaporating milk straight in there. And then a block of butter, which you know, when you're making brownies or a cake, yeah. Okay, that, that's fine. But now, I, <laughs> I do need to just double check this. Four cups of sugar. I don't even know if this like dish is gonna be big enough to take 800 grams. <laughs> it's like huge. That is eight. Oh my, this is so much. And that's just pure sugar. Remember, there's still all the naughtiness from the fluff and the chocolate. All right, at least we've got beef. That is insane. Surely that is wrong, surely. Flame. Cook 
soaks the butter, milk and sugar for five minutes, stirring often, then remove it from the heat. Okay. Within a couple of seconds, you would suddenly not really think that there was that much sugar in there. It's all been absorbed in and we're just gonna melt the butter too into one big gooey mixture. Okay, so as we wait for the butter to melt, the sugar has pretty much dissolved now. And this is actually sort of like going like a caramel texture, very thick and glossy. Oh, that, that is done. <laughs> oh my gosh. I've got to say, between you and I, check this out. That looks really, really, really nice. I'm going to taste some. And I'm going to steam the camera up first though. It's just starting to unsteam. There we go. <laughs> this looks so good. Right. It's going to be hot. It's going to be hot. Ah, wow. That is amazingly naughty. Oh, tastes like ice cream. I have a burnt tongue for the rest of my day. Do you ever find that when you have a burnt tongue? Like you just see there, you're like, this pain's never gonna end. And then one day it just goes like, and you never remember that moment when your burnt tongue stopped, do you? Stir in the chocolate chips and the marshmallow fluff until melted through. Marshmallow fluff is going in. Um, I got my measurements wrong in the supermarket. Ended up buying three tubs of this stuff. So if anyone's got any marshmallow fluff recipe ideas, I think the thing that appeals to me about this recipe is like that whole thing. My friend made a, a zucchini cake. He's American the other day, like a courgette cake. He's like, oh, this is crazy. Well, like, yeah, just, um, let's take this up a notch. <laughs> There's something about crazy ingredients when they come together and sometimes make something awesome. The key word I just said was sometimes. And I really don't want to mix that through. I want to kind of like make a cake. Imagine if it's set like that with that sort of caramelly layer and then we're topping it with these chocolate chips. It's supporting the weight of those chocolate chips. Come on, give in, give in. All right, let's bring the spoon in. And obviously it's insanely hot down there. We're gonna fold this all in together. And I really want that marshmallow fluff to kind of blend in because that's kind of critical right now. And also I really hope this saucepan is gonna be big enough. There we go. It's starting to give in a bit now. So once that really starts to melt, it should really change the color here because we need it brown to mask the beef, don't we? <laughs> Uh, so obviously this is not suitable for vegans or vegetarians and as we add nuts in a minute This isn't really suitable for people with nut allergies just like Nutella But to be honest, I think if you're making this that's probably the very least of your worries. I've actually got to try this Oh my gosh That's triggered a massive food memory in my mind I spent some time out in America working on a summer camp and I would be obsessed with Dunkin' Donuts hot chocolate. I've never tasted anything like it. We just made Dunkin' Donuts hot chocolate. Let's stop now. No, let's not. But that is just such an awesome sight. Wow. That is so nice. Is it good, right? Mm-hmm. That's amazing, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is so nice. Did I just give my kids diabetes? We now add in one, two drops of vanilla extract because of course that's gonna make a massive difference. The chopped walnuts, whoa. And yes, now we add in the beef. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh my gosh. That felt so wrong, but so right. Let's stir it. It smells like a farm. You smell like a farm. <laughs> no! Mix the nuts and the beef in together. It kind of looks innocent now. It looks like grated chocolate. Oh my gosh. This has gone a lot better than I thought to be fair so far. Well, the really weird thing is, is it's telling me to beat it until it's firm. And that doesn't look like it's gonna go firm at all, does it? Uh, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna carry on and I think we'll let it stand at room temperature and then put it in the fridge if nothing's happening. So this is my lined 20 centimeter tin. Um, I personally feel like we're gonna have enough to do two tins, but hey ho, let's go. Oh my gosh. Yes, I'm gonna stop about halfway up and I'm gonna do another batch. I'm gonna put one of these in the fridge and one at room temperature. And I'll see you in an hour, if we give it an hour. I'm gonna give it a little bit longer than that. Gonna go out with the family to the woods for a nice little walk. And in my mind, try not to think about the fact that there's a meaty chocolate mixture taking over my house. Yeah. In the wild, you can find 
a family. All right. Hello. I've just realised I'm making an actual beef cake. Yeah. Yeah, you are. Our house is going to smell amazing. It's going to smell lovely. Come on, guys. There's <laughs> nature. Okay, so we're back from a couple of hours out and about in the woods at one with nature back to our beef smelling kitchen. So this is the one that we put in the fridge and I think, look, that actually wants to come out quite good. So it should chop up into fudge shapes. The other one I left at room temperature was still a bit wobbly, which is a concern because we were out for so long. I'll put it in the fridge to firm up, but I do believe on the hob, I perhaps should have like boiled it maybe a teeny bit longer to help with the sugar and the caramelization process. But with a good set like this, we're back to our beefy chunks. Should we see what it's like? Oh. <laughs> Wow! When I was walking in the woods, instead of enjoying the nature and the trees fully, I was thinking, hmm, surely it should have been condensed milk, but no, this seems to have done the job. Will it slice? Oh yes, it will. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to keep this knife a bit cooler though, because it's quite warm in this room right now, so it's making it a bit gummy. It is firmed, but it's, oh, that stinks. <laughs> It does smell a lot like dog food. So there we go, fudge fit for a dog. <laughs> Let's get the family in and see what they think. Da, 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 da. The ambassador's reception presents beef fudge. Have a smell, have a smell, have a smell, have a smell. Smells mm. like a chocolate delicatessen. Sorry about the uh, mangled slices. <laughs> Close. Are we ready? Yeah. yeah. Right, take a piece. It's a little bit gummy. I'm going to just take a bit off the corner. Oh, oh I'm just going to grab a bit like that. Oh, get a bit. Jeez. Oh it's my gosh, gross. it really smells of dog food. <laughs> it does smell of dog food. Are you ready? It didn't when it was like that. <laughs> Maybe you got the biggest bit out of all of us. <laughs> this is the girl it. that doesn't really like meat. Wow, that's sweet. Um, do you like it? It's very fibrous. It tastes of dog food a bit. It does. Oh. It does. The more you mention it. <laughs> the dog food jelly bean. I like this one. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what it's what like. like. The dog food flavoured one. There is a little bit of chocolate. I mean, the sugar has massively mashed right. it. It is a little bit like. Oh. Oh, well, that would be such a nice treat if it wasn't for the beef. It is a treat, maybe for a dog, yeah. <laughs> our roast, our Sunday roast, this is it. Okay, so I'll uh, roast dinner. Oh, you're still eating it, Chloe. Do you uh, like it? Yeah. I can't, there's something about it. It's not. She's still going. It's only when you stop and think that there's beef in there, you get that chocolatey taste and it's like, yeah, okay. And then it's the fibrousy, meaty stuff and like. Yeah, no. Mm. Well, there we go. Uh, beef fudge, try it if you wish. I am gonna say that was slightly better than the banana hollandaise thing that we did. That was one of the last ones we oh, did. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Another retro recipe. So if you've missed that one, do check it out. If you've seen any of the nostalgic recipes, do let me know. But I really wanted to try that. I'm glad we did. Yeah, me too. Um, but I'm glad I'll never try it again. But yeah. for you, it's yours forever. Now me. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's moustache, goatee, maybe all three. It's like chocolate dog food. <laughs> the really weird thing is because Chloe and I can tolerate it, we'll probably end up like working our way through it over the next couple of weeks and having it as some sort of savoury sweet appetizer. If you try it, just bear in mind it does taste like a jelly bean. See you next time.